Although we seldom think about it, our lifestyles intimately connected with and highly dependent on agriculture. In this lecture, we will examine key concepts and spatial patterns in agricultural geographies to include the third agricultural revolution, the comparison between green and gene revolutions and genetically modified organisms. These topics are important to geography because of how and why the spatial patterns of agriculture have emerged and diffused in a global setting. The third agricultural revolution, which is still in progress, began in the 20th century with technological innovations and the development of scientific farming techniques. More specifically, extensive mechanization, heavy reliance on irrigation, chemical applications, and biotechnology. Some of the mechanizations included gasoline-powered tractors, which reduced the labor hours, increased cultivation over larger areas, and led to monoculture planting, or the planting of a single crop over a large field. The photos on the right show examples of monoculture farming, and the chart shows the increase in production of certain monocrops over the last 50 years. Another innovation is scientific farming which relies on technology and synthetic chemicals to promote crop growth, deter crop disease, prevent weeds, or solve other agricultural challenges. Part of scientific farming is agrobiotech, which seeks to improve the quality and yield of crops and livestock through the use of such techniques as crossbreeding, hybridization, and genetic engineering. The impact of agrobiotech tech produced some of the most technological advances to date, the Green Revolution and the Gene Revolution. The Green Revolution in agriculture, which grew out of an effort to alleviate world hunger in the 1950s, dramatically increased the grain production by the introduction of high-yielding fertilizer and irrigation-dependent varieties of wheat, rice, and corn, mainly in Asia and Latin America between 1965 and 1985. The innovations in the Green Revolution were shared with governments and agencies in developing countries and staved off famine in Asia and enabled India to become self-sufficient in grain production. In less than a decade, wheat production nearly doubled in both India and Mexico. The Green Revolution, on the other hand, is a shift since the 1980s to greater private and corporate involvement in and control of the research, development, intellectual property rights, and genetic engineering of highly specialized agricultural products, especially crop varieties. The table shows changes in the nature of agricultural production in India, Pakistan, and other developing countries in Asia. The Green Revolution introduced a new system of agriculture dependent on irrigation, heavy inputs of synthetic fertilizers, greater mechanization, and the monoculture of wheat or rice. As shown in the graph, the Green Revolution was diffused unevenly. Worldwide, wheat, rice, and corn production have been strongly affected. Africa, which depends on other cereal crops, remains least affected by the Green Revolution. Within Asia and Latin America, areas with reliable rainfall and where irrigation is possible have benefited the most. The two main differences between the Green and Gene Revolution is that 1. The Green Revolution was shared with governments and agencies in developing countries, where in the Green Gene Revolution, genetically engineered crops have been protected by patents. And 2. The Gene Revolution is more closely associated with multinational corporations and the spread of capitalism. The gene revolution is highly contested in that who really stands to benefit from the genetics. For example, the Monsanto Corporation, an agrobiotech multinational company, acquired the company that developed terminator seeds, seeds that produce sterile plants so that farmers have to purchase new seeds from Monosat, Monsanto each year. Who is this really helping? As part of the gene revolution, genetic engineering is important where the transferring of genes from animals or even viruses to crops are done by scientists. This process is called transgenic or genetically modified organisms, GMOs for short. Those in favor of this practice consider it to be a viable means to overcome environmental problems and generating more reliable yields. Those against it often raise the concerns of actual effectiveness, safety and healthy health, and long-term ecological consequences.
Genetically modified GM crops have been made more resistant to weeds, pests, and diseases, and sometimes have higher nutritional value than traditional crops. As shown in the map, the number of countries planting GM crops climbed from 6 in 1996, the first year they were introduced, to 25 in 2008. GM varieties are used to plant about 40% of the total acreages sown to soybeans, maize, cotton, and canola. However, GM crops remain controversial because they mix genes from different organisms and some are marketed without labels to indicate that they have been modified. Please pause the video and answer the following. Compare and contrast the green and gene revolutions. Also include in your answer the controversy surrounding GMOs. In your own words, using the text as a guide, be thorough and specific with your answer.